Okay, first of all, thank you very much, Aishurya and Venusar and Sharon Ma'am for the kind words and introduction. And I hope you all are keeping well in this pandemic time. It's a crisis condition we are all going through. So I hope you are all safe and keeping well. And as you know, the title is Practicality of Studying Science. I'm from Advanced Materials for Bioengineering Research Center, Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. And I'm going to talk about this practicality of studying science. I'm sure you would have wondered, like, you know, what's this all about, like, by hearing the title. So you would have wondered, like, what's this all about, like. So I'm going into those things in a minute. But before that, I would like to thank the organizers, Sri Narayana College, Changinur, for giving me this opportunity, Venusar and Sharon Ma'am and all the faculties associated with this college and especially Dr. Smita Shashitharan. I had the privilege of working with her in when my during my PhD time and she was a great scientist that time. She was a great researcher. I'm sure she will be a, she's a great teacher too now. So thanks Smita for all this opportunity. Much appreciated. So I will start my talk with a question like, why do you need to study science at all or any subject or language? You all know the answers like, right? So it's to learn new things that will be useful in your future life, to develop better understanding of the world in which we live, to build knowledge and build upon that built knowledge and get a good job and succeed in life. For example, if you are studying history, if you are a history student, to develop a much greater appreciation for current events because you know the past and you know the current, current present and you you appreciate from the past how much we have forwarded like you know so to and then to increase your competence confidence and self-esteem in your life and to acquire and develop new skill sets it's all about acquiring and developing new skill sets so that you can succeed in your future life. Use that, apply that and do that something useful for the society or get a job or, you know, get settled in your life. And by getting a job and get settled, you can promote your quality of life, then assist your personal growth. And that way you can survive and thrive in the ever changing world. So. If you Google science, the meaning of science in Google, you can find that it's a Latin word originated from a Latin word, scientia. And it's, it itself says knowledge, systematic knowledge acquired or gained through observation and experimentation. So, you know, the experimentation is core of all these science. Practical thing is the core. If you teach a student just a theory, it's not going to work that extent. So it's all about practicals. If you can demonstrate the student the theory with their relatable practical work, it can do wonders. Like So I found this quote from, again, Googling. It says, learning science without practical work is like learning literature without reading books. You know how important it is reading books if you are studying a literature student. It's the same with the science as well. It's all about practical knowledge. If you can relate the practical work to your theory, you will, the student, you, when I say you, I, I mean the students will better understand the theory and all the concepts. So again, the importance of practical knowledge, acquiring practical knowledge to improve understanding of theory, then to develop practical understanding. And if the practical is very relatable, they can better understand the scientific principle behind it and then to develop specific practical skills such as measurement, observation, analysis and attention to detail and those kind of skills you, know, you can develop through these practical experiments and to, then you can gain generic skills such as teamwork and problem solving and through this practical I am again saying you can engage the students in a much better way and motivate the students in a much effective way. So this is a slide that shows some pictures. You know, whenever you talk about practicals, you, you always show the pictures of a chemistry. As we are chemistry professionals and chemistry students, we are happy that 
the chemistry is shown up everywhere like you know people the students with all the colored chemicals and stuff but it's not just about chemistry from top to clockwise direction the second one is i guess it's a demonstration of the bernoulli's principle and the fourth one the, uh, the students with microscopes and stuff it, it could be a demonstration of a practical based on a, in biology or botany those kind of experiment it could be in material science as well and the guy with the, the vote meter it can be basis of a physical physics experiment or a electrical engineering experiment and the most important picture i have i in this that case you know, the, the one with the two kids you know with a colored solution i like this because you know whenever you do science you should be you should be careful about doing science with all the personal protective equipments see the kids are wearing the goggles and if you are doing a chemistry experiment you know it can produce nasty very nasty chemicals fumes and it can it can be corrosive it can be carcinogenic so whenever do an experiment in lab some experiment you can be done in bench top as experiments but some of the experiments will produce nasty chemicals fumes and you know you need to be careful you you need to teach the students about using all the personal protective equipments if you are if you know that the chemical will produce this kind of nasty chemicals this should be done in a fume hood this should be and the fume hood should be very efficient it should have the very good inflex properties and very good circulatory properties you know so it's very important because i'm saying this because my brother's kid surian he was once asking me about this like he wanted to do some experiment he found it in youtube he was asking me i said no you cannot do this if you want to do this you have to talk to your teacher and with your teacher's permission you can do in a lab it's not possible in the real world you know in a new home you cannot do this you have to you have to wear the personal protective equipment because health and safety is the most important thing in your life you know so you should you should teach them you should be aware of these things so practicals in science only it's, it's not about science only in, in, you can design and you know do the practicals in every every subject every discipline everything for example this is simple everyone knows about this for example scouts and guides uh, guides activities you know surveys for example you can ask the students to conduct surveys that will give the sense of togetherness a sense of that unity and all those things they will un better understand about the food habits and stuff than charity events and nss activities and these are some simple examples but in different disciplines the teachers can design with their creativity and stuff they can design whatever very relatable very useful practicals and they can demonstrate to the students they can enable the students to be better students like you know so the the whole idea and effort should be to help students develop basic understanding of all subjects so that they could choose one of their favorite subjects in their onward studies i'm talking this as this is a general talk this is not maybe this is not about the higher education and this could be because current uh, as i'm talking this the you know the current amendment or the introduction of new education system i'm not talking anything politics here but that's a good thing you know but when you in schools you 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 teach the students the basics and the fundamentals and engage them and motivate them and let them choose their topic you know then they can choose they don't need to study all the unnecessary uh, things that they don't want in their future life if they know about the stuff what they like you know they can continue studying that core topic and that way this new system is very good i'm saying so i like this uh, to this cartoon you know this is uh, based on a saying from a quote from albert einstein and he says everybody is genius is a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid so it's it's all about the students understanding the students no student is a bad student you know different people will have different taste just as as teachers our our aim is to better 
teach them and let them understand all the let them, let them know all the fundamentals and you know engage them and motivate them and let them find out their own case and their own field in their future studies so you know student is a bad student you know so i would again like to quote these two quotes from albert einstein and he says i have no special talent i'm only passionately curious he says he is not he has no special talent and he says imagination imagination is more important than knowledge knowledge is limited imagination encircles the world these two quotes sum up all about students if you can engage the students in a good way and if you can motivate if you can build this develop these qualities in students like imagination curiosity enthusiasm logical thinking relatable understanding and you can develop the intuition in students they will go wow this is cool you know and, and they can do wonders and who does this is the most important person in their life in this period is the teacher the teacher can you know influence them the teacher is the person who influences them and if the teacher is good to them you know and the students might, might be going through lots of things in their personal life you know we are chemistry teachers if the student is not good in chemistry try to at least understand them i, I am sure this is very difficult thing teachers have all the workloads and you know different things going on in their life as well and with putting in all the effort after putting in all the effort if they are teaching in the class and the student doesn't care the teacher will go crazy like mad like but still it's better to try to understand them or if you are if you are angry at all don't show to them you know just what you don't need to do the best way is try to understand their situation you know they must be going through they may be going through difficult period in their life you know try to understand them if you cannot try to understand them if you don't have time for those things at least try to smile at them you know whenever you come across them in the school in and outside the school if you just l- simply smile at them they will you know when i was a student i liked the topic i liked the subjects because i liked the teacher first you know if if i didn't like a teacher i didn't like that topic i didn't, didn't like that subject so a teacher matters a lot you know so at least simply even if the student is a bad student for you you know try to at least smile at them and whenever you come back cuz that will make a lot that that do it wonders you know they could even change their they could even start liking the subject you are teaching with that note i will i would like to introduce my case studies how we can design the uh, tacticals you know for example this case study this is, i think is very relatable things if if you are giving a practical experiment based on coca cola if you give a cup of bottle of coca cola and ask them to find its uh, ph by titration experiments and because they know the word coca cola they like the coca cola you know so they will better understand when you talk about the ph the concept of ph the ph meter and the, its usage and all the concept other concept like it's a, it has phosphoric acid it's a polyprotic acid and all the dissociation constants and stuff if you teach them they will try to better understand because they know the coca cola they can really relate it and if you if you want you can further teach with with your creativity and you know everything you, you can also talk about the biochemical processes but as a chemistry teacher you are not supposed to talk about the biochemical processes but if you develop a syllabus if you it's not your job to develop syllabuses but i'm as this is a general talk uh, I, i i talk it as a food for thought you know if you can develop uh, syllabuses complementary if a chemistry teacher uh, teaches this if a biochemistry teacher or a biology teacher uh, teaches the complementary topics same same in same time in schools you know or colleges it's it's much effective you know the the students can grasp it very well in an effective way so you know our higher education at least our curriculum our, our syllabus are the same for last 30 plus years right so i guess it's high time we modified that but that's not our job but i'm just saying it so 
with that I would like to show this uh, scanning this is a scanning electron microscope of a human hair so this guy his name is okay, uh, underneath here so this guy made a note with the human hair and took the scanning electron microscope image this is very important for me because I, I took it because you know it, this says many things about science it science is understanding the real things the underlying things about the things you know it, it, it's it's like the saying all that glitters are not gold you know so if you see a, a, in real world if you see a human hair it's shiny it's smooth and it's good but if you zoom into it uh, you can see that it's it's with all the its surfaces with all the irregularities and scratches and curves the science is about the same thing you try to understand the science in much deeper way in a fundamental way and you try to observe that ex through experiments and you analyze and you find new things and it's the science the teaching science is an enabling process and through that process you can uh, you can develop you can help the students develop new skill sets for you know so that they can observe they can experiment they can analyze they can give great attention to details and they can they can become great scientists in the future who knows you know and they can even be, be if not scientists good professors good lectures good teachers and if not in the science world you know they can they can do wonders with that thing i would like to introduce you to the nanotechnology as well and i i know many of you you, you know about these things as well, but i'm i'm just introducing the for the students here the nano nanotechnology because this is see the human hair the picture and it's 75 microns across it's with the 75 microns when we talk about nanomaterials it's in the nanometer scale nanometer is the, ten, the power of minus nine meters and you can compare this is 75 microns it's uh, if you divide that bit by thousand times you know you can get a nano material and with that through this case study what i am trying, trying to show is you know how how we can design a practical work i hope i can convince you so this is like you know first first is the again this human hair and this is of 75 microns and then i will introduce you to this second one the top from top clockwise again and this is the uh, electron microscope of uh, the microscopic image of a uh, bacteria some bacteria and then the same, next one is a zinc oxide particle if you see the particle here i have the same particles here it's, it's just a white white powder but if you zoom into the if you try to understand if you have somehow try to this is a scanning electron microscope and you can see that this is made these particles are you know with uh, having some specific size and shape you know and the, the next one is as well the bottom one zinc oxide with a specific special shape and you can control you can prepare these materials with different size and shape and you can study their properties based on the size and shape they can change their, their properties can be changed and you can tune the materials for different applications so i am and then i would like to introduce even small particles this is silver nanoparticles that this is a transmission electron microscope of silver nanoparticles you can see this the the bottom mid one you know the middle one so you can see the silver nanoparticles you have seen the silver right you have seen the glittery the white glaze glazing silver but if you prepare nanoparticles you know you can prepare this in triangular shape you can prepare in spherical shape you can prepare in disc like shape and with different fancy shapes and sizes you know with with different size and shapes it will have different applications and then i will introduce you to the silicon nanoparticles apart from these top two images all are my, my my stuff in my lab we prepared this silicon nanoparticles and if you if i blow it blow these images up the first one is silicon nanoparticles and second one is silver nanoparticles and showing this okay if you show this to a student they will go wow this is and and you know the, like you can see the atomic arrangements these small dots are the atomic arrangements 
and and if you see if you if you introduce those things and if, if you then talk about the atomic arrangement that crystals and nanocrystals they will understand it much in much effective way they will after seeing this you can show them okay this is the nanoparticle and you can see the atomic arrangements you know the small dots it's atom atoms are in silicon atoms arranged in the diamond like structure so they will go out like you know you know you can oh i can measure these things in real life you know and I, if and they will at least some of the students will be excited to they would think okay i want to study this in my future you know i want to become that this so this is very important you can you can you can design this uh, with the help of relevant people you can you can ask college teachers you can also design these experiments i, I will talk about those things later in my talk then you can introduce this then then you can to you know better engage them you can you can do all those things you can show a video batteries do the experiment in lab but if you cannot do the experiment in lab you can show the videos from uh, from uh, any scientist you can get these videos for example this is in our lab we made this sil silicon nanoparticles right so this is by mixing some redu uh, reducing agent, uh, silver reducing agents and adding silver into that. You can, you know, first it turns yellow when the nanoparticles are formed because I said it's, it depends, the color or is originated from its and shape of silver nanoparticles. When it's a solution, it's clear solution. When it start forming the crystals, it will start showing different colors first as it's a small particles as they are small particles it will show a yellow color and then it slowly turns into different colors like i will fast forward I'll fast forward okay and then it turns like a maroon like color and, and it's it's cool right it's for for a student it will it, it will be at least even better if you if you are just talking about the theory and the crystallography and all those things you know it's this is much effective way to to teach them like they will go wow this this is cool i can i can make this in my lab and see this is the different colors of silver nanoparticles with different colors again this is only one representative uh, transmission electron microscope by controlling for example if you can make all triangular bigger particles this will be a different color and if you can make all these spherical particles, this will be a different color. So that way you can make all these particles, you know. So and then you can study with different absorption, different experimental techniques. You can study its other properties. Like you make some particles, you study its properties. For example, this is the right one is the UV visible spectrometer and, and a spectrum. It's an extinction spectrum. Extinction means the absorption and scattering spectrum. And because it's absorbing some light and it's reflecting some other light, it shows this particular color. And you can talk about all those things. How, how, okay, I will do it like this, sorry. Uh, okay, and, 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 and you can talk about the, the, the science of light as well you are not supposed to as a chemistry teacher you are not maybe but it's all about uh, creating complementary you know uh, syllabuses for different relevant classes so then you can introduce the applications of silver nanoparticles to them then they will better understand okay you have those kind of particles you can prepare in your lab and this is applied for some applications for example for silver especially they are they have antimicrobial part they are antimicrobial particles. They can kill the bacteria and viruses and molds and stuff. I don't know they, if they can kill the coronavirus, but even if they can kill the coronavirus, it cannot be used, you know, as a as a medicine because silver is not good for humans to take it in, like you know. So, but uh, you can. So this is the applications. They will better understand uh, about these applications once you. See, once you give a bigger picture and work your way back and then introduce the fundamentals, they will understand more. And you can also talk about the other applications, like for example, this is a sensing applications. For example, silver is a surface enhanced diamond active substrate. It can sense trace amount of chemicals as well. For example, one ex good example is your glucose. You know, you are, uh, if you are a diabetic person, you can, the silver technology is now developing to create 
glucose sensing materials so you can all introduce these things to them by and then you can automatically introduce the concept of nanomaterials and let me explain to you you know what i would do like you know so this is for example the picture here is a pile of silica sand and if you measure the surface area of this pile of silica sand let's say that it's it's a whole total area if you take all the crystal each crystal and measure it's it's a tedious task but somehow you measure it's it's its surface area will be like let's say like the the, the area of kerala or the area of india but if you process it somehow make a nanoparticle nanoparticles out of this silica the whole silica sand and if you measure the its effective surface area it can even even surpass the surface the area of the whole earth you know so that kind of dramatic in, increase in surface to volume ratio the volume is the same the pile of sand this pile of sand but keeping the same volume you can increase the surface area dramatically to explain is uh, explain it much better way i have this block here consider this the bigger block as a one silica crystal and if after the processing if you break it up into smaller crystals and these smaller crystals are if nanoparticles you know it, it, then their effective surface area will be the added up surface area of all these small particles in that way it can create it can create a dramatic increase in surface area you know if you change the surface area of a material dramatically that kind of increase it will lead to increased surface energy so any system with increased surface energy any system you increase the surface energy if the surface energy is high the all the systems in this universe that's the fundamental principle will try to reduce their surface energy in some way or other for example for some materials it will be catalysis some materials will be show will be will depending on the material properties as well it will show very much improved electrical properties electronic properties or photonic properties for a simple example you stand one in with your one leg up you know so that is you are standing in your system you are the whole the energy system is high you are in an excited state so you would automatically try to put your leg back you know with and you try to stand with both legs in the air right so that way you are trying to reduce your total system energy so the same is applicable to all materials they will take part in some kind of reaction so they will show some very dramatic improvement in the some uh, properties and why the nano science is so important this is the basic principle behind them so you can you can teach them again you can show them okay this is this is okay the nano technology the word is novel and the, you know the we have the very advanced state of the art art instruments to measure those uh, particles and stuff but somehow somehow old ancient people use these technologies without knowing the real science of it even in india uh, people used gold nanoparticles for treatment as medicinal um, uh, materials you know this is the picture the left hand one is a picture of silver vessel and they the ancient people used those for drinking fluids and stuff and, and they they believed uh, they they knew that they could extend the shelf life of the material because they knew that they had the antimicrobial properties like uh, they used silver based copper based vessels and the right hand one is a picture from a window of a cathedral in prague it's, and 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 this this shows you know they they made this pictures this art this picture from they they they, they made this painting from using metal nanoparticles you know if the metal nanoparticles were just bigger they wouldn't have shown this kind of vivid vibrant colors because they are nanoparticles they 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 show this kind of different vivid brilliant colors so they somehow knew about the nanoparticles they prepared the nanoparticles without without really knowing the fundamentals of it and then i would show my second the third case study so this is again based on silica materials and uh, this is called an opal the left one the image uh, bottom left one this is a opal opaline crystal 
you may have, you may know about the opaline crystals, right? So opal is basically a hydrated form of amorph amorphous silica in which it has some voids and the voids that are periodic and it has some water content 3 to 21 percent. Because it's periodic structures, it will scatter light, you know, it will reflect and refract light. And the, the middle one, middle two are the peacock, you know, the, the, the mypili, you know, the mypili. You know. So this is showing this particular color because of it, it shows some uh, phenomenon called diffraction, refraction and reflection. I will talk about this in a minute, like, but and then what I want to show is, you know, if you show this to a student then, uh, and if you if you show them the two two pictures, the left and right one that that's made in our lab. And if you can show them, OK, this can be made in a lab, you know, this is you, you can make this these materials in a lab and they will it can engage them in a much better way and they will introduce this concept of photonic crystal. And you can show the, all these pictures and and they will automatically develop this they will have this question why this these are showing these colors right then if you can explain if you take a picture blow up their surface if and if you can somehow image their surface in a zoomed in if you blow up their you know, surface like using a this is an a scanning electron microscopy image this is showing a periodic some kind of periodic structures you know because of this periodicity and they will have this question why these are those so this will be colored and when you show them because they have this kind of periodic kind of structures they are diffracting and reflect reflecting and refracting light and through that process this is showing up these colors they will understand in, in a much better way and then you can definitely so you have shown there them something interesting and then if you can introduce and if you can talk about for example if you can show these pictures this is from our lab be prepared okay those were pseudo like periodic structures but but we can in, in, in our lab we can prepare even better periodic structures these are photonic crystals made out of silica and this shows some uh, very good periodicity you know and you can prepare and control and, and you can show these pictures right and you would be wondering okay cool this is nice i can prepare this how i can prepare this in this lab and then you can introduce the chemistry process so, so it's not just the chemistry teachers work, but it's a complementary if the physics teacher show it teaches that the chemistry teacher simultaneously can teach the chemistry process you can introduce all these concepts you know the preparation methods and solution properties the ph the surface tension and all the crystallography the assembly processes and all the crystal concept the face centered cubic concept and all the body centered cubic concept so i am talking in a much faster way because i need to finish it in time but as teachers you can take these examples and you can you can create you can design much better practicals you know you can teach them in a much better way and then uh, you know you can if you show this kind of things videos if you cannot show this in the lab if you show them these kind of videos at least this is from uh, i created this video so you would go the students okay it's all it's already 45 minutes like i tried to finish fast so this is showing again these are made in, the, and with different angles it, in, it diffracts and reflects and refracts lights and through because of that thing it's showing these vivid colors the right side three images are the natural structures but this is the thing we artificially make this we can artificially make in our lab and we can we can study different properties but i'm not going into the lots of science excuse me science of all these things i'm just trying to demonstrate how we can create we can bet practicals and engage students you know after seeing this they will automatically develop a liking like you know this is so cool i can i can i want to <coughs> at least you know prepare these or so you can introduce other concepts as well 
can you know shine light on these particles and through a waveguide optical fiber and you can focus the light into the into your sample and you can measure these properties not i'm not going into the details so this is how i would introduce the topic into a student for a student so that their automatic question will be how this is producing those kind of vivid colors you know they will have this question so then you can introduce these basic fundamental principles like you know we can talk about the periodic dielectric structures and why they are producing these colors and then you can introduce the photonic band gap because they are periodic and they have periodic dielectric structures they will form a band gap the band gap means that's forbidden energy state so that for photonic band gap means light cannot enter in that band gap region you know if the band gap is for example in the range for example 500 to 600 nanometers because light wavelength you know from 400 to 700 if you can create a materials with band gap 400 500 nanometer that light cannot pass through that materials that kind of things you can introduce all those things i'm not going to, into much detail greater detail of these things but this this cartoon schematic is says so you shine a white light into this material and some will be transmitted through that some will be refracted through that and some will be reflected those are the basic principle basis of creating this band gap you can introduce those things because now the student is all very much interested in learning these things then you can introduce other things like photonic crystals you can compare with semiconductors you know for example, I am talking about this as examples because semiconductors are periodic arrangement of atoms and photonic crystals are, are periodic arrangement of some materials which has, which has a much in uh, their length scale is in the visible light range that is between 400 to 700 nanometers. So it's similar analogous system but the size range is different. So you can introduce all these concepts and semiconductors are mostly natural structures and photonic cells we can artificially make them and you can introduce all these basic principles you can talk about deep Rolly wavelength and <clears throat> you can talk about the basic principles like Bragg law for example this follows the Bragg law I'm not going to talk about the Bragg law in detail on, uh, and the Bragg Snell's law in detail but if I, 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 were to, I were to teach the students in that particular on particular topic, I will spend much you know, more time and teach them in detail those kind of things. So then you can go back to your your transmission electron microscope as well. And then if you show them, okay, this is the atomic arrangements. Because of these atomic arrangements, they are the semiconductors are showing their properties like you know and then the, you can compare with the photonic crystals as well and you can talk about you can teach them about the crystallography and all those th depending on your creativity and stuff so i i just try to introduce these things then uh, you can introduce other 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 fundamentals around that principles around the photonic structures and photonic crystals and photonic band gaps and they know now that you can prepare this and this will produce this kind of cool structures and you know they'll be if you just teach them the principles go and the theory they, they wouldn't understand in an effective way but if you can show them these videos and this kind of if you can exp show the experiment in the lab much better but you cannot do all those experiments in lab but you can you can get these details you can get these you know things from uh, different scientists and professors who are working in different labs and stuff if you can work together with them you can you can do wonders like you can make better study materials and again you can introduce the Bragg concept for example the Snell slow and everything as chemistry teachers I'm not going to, into details but I'm because I'm introducing this see for every principle let it be in physics let it be in uh, biology, in uh, botany. Most of the, almost all principles needs not to prove the theory. Some equations uh, need to be used, you know, solve that problem and prove the theory. 
So I have seen all these trolls recently, you know, somebody would be asking like, why do we have, why did we have to study the sine theta by cos theta? But if you are in the future, if you are to study science, if you are even, you want to study, study chemistry, bio, biology, botany, you need to be good, your fundamentals, you, you, you need to get your fundamentals right in mathematics, you know. So you need to study the mathematics, the basic things about mathematics, the basic principles, the theories and the, 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 all the equations that will help you in bit, you know, in better way in your future studies. Because as a chemist, I have studied chemistry and I didn't, after, in the school I was good in mathematics, but after that I lost interest. I'm struggling now, you know. So that's very important. So how do we do it? That's the question. You know? Where do we get information data from? I have already told you, you are going through all these refresher courses. So you get to know you, you, you through these refresher courses, you get to know different scientists, different professors, and you get to know what they are good at, what they their fields are. You can get this kind of information from them, you know. So uh, it's, it need not be one person. The teachers can form a group of group and they can, they can create, for example, a story or a narrative, for example, let's say silver, they can create a story like from the silver invention of first silver and then up to the state of the art. And they can create this story and they can link to, you no, know, it's like a Wikipedia, but it's more like, the concept is more like a, no, it's all about the social media thing. You know, you can find, if you Google, if you search in YouTube, you can find all the relevant very good uh, lectures from some very good professors from Massachusetts or Harvard or you know they know their stuff they know what they are doing you know so they they explain it in a much better way the, all the fundamentals and if you can create as teachers you can create a story and link all those YouTube videos to this story and, it, and you can for example we created this website like you know scifame.com so the tagline is, let's make it simple. This is to help the students and teachers. We, some of the friends created this. So the basic idea is to, you know, whoever a teachers, a group of teachers or can create this story and you, there's no app in this, there's no app because this won't take any space in your mobile phone or no registration needed. So your data is not collected. So, but if you can create, if you can spend, you, you, if you can form a, create a group of teachers, can create a group and then you can create a story about your topic, you know, and then link all the YouTube videos and create that story and send it or send it to this email. They can upload this there and, and you can send this, the link to the students before the class and they will go through all the videos. If they were to uh, Google and find out one by one, they they could they might they could even miss some of the topics. But if you have a story, the flowing story, they can go through all those things because it's videos based on around videos as well. They will try to understand. They will understand in a much better way. And then in the classroom, you can talk about, you can discuss, and then you can do some practicals. And this is like you know this is very effective way we think you know. And if you can make that, you can take the help of us, take the help of any scientists, everyone would be happy. The best way is to modify our syllabuses and curriculum. Our syllabuses are some 35 years old. It's, it's, but that's not our job. That's the job of bigger people like, you know, the policy makers, the think tanks and the bigger people. Whatever we can do, we can do. So this is like little helps what, what we can do if you can find time and if you can if you think this is good enough you know this is good as uh, you can create you can form the groups and you can create a group and you can form, develop these stories and that can be published this is not an app you don't need to the students don't need to pay it's all in the in the open it's all like you know there in the youtube there in the in the internet so it's very accessible to the students as well so they will it will it will help them so that's the method the teachers can form a group and develop a story, can get help from scientists and university research groups, you know, can find suitable, use suitable scientists and professors through refresher courses. We are all happy to help. If you ask me, I'm more than happy, happy to help to develop 
whatever I know, the, the practicals, you know, and you don't need to do this practical if the, there is no facility for that a specific topic you don't need to do in the lab, but you can show at least some videos and they'll be much engaged and interested. The whole thing is about building, you know, about helping students to become better persons, you know, if they want to be in, want to be in, in, in science, they can be, you know, you can develop, help them develop these skills, like their enthusiasm, curiosity and all these things. And who knows? They can, they can be even better scientists. Like you know, greater scientists, they can do some wonders in the future for the society and for themselves as well. So, with that note, I think I am. I have reached the end of the talk. I hope I try to convince you all about the practicality of doing science. At least to some extent and these are the persons you know I thankfully remember